a land of wonder, home to the largest religious monument in the world, a country where eating insects is a common occurrence and the host of a dark past yet continues to persevere. Welcome to Cambodia. Join us as I cover its history, people, and culture. There is no exact date where humans started settling in what is now modern-day Cambodia, but they may have come as early as 4000 BC. Most of the cities developed along the coasts, and Indian traders frequently traded with the people within the area during the first century AD. The influence of Indian culture would be paramount in shaping what we know of Cambodian culture today. It wasn't only Indian culture that helped mold what we know now as Cambodian traditions. Chinese traders who were also able to make their way through the region were able to pass their own ways of life. Chinese sources would claim that a rich kingdom, or kingdoms, was flourishing during the 3rd and 6th centuries. They would call this kingdom Funan, and for 300 years they were able to maintain contact with the Chinese by offering gifts and trading. By the 5th and 6th centuries, Indian culture took its roots within the Cambodian elite, and several Hindu kingdoms sprang up in southern Cambodia. The major influence of India and Hinduization introduced many different technologies to the Cambodian people. Most importantly, large-scale irrigation, which allowed the local population to produce more crops per year, thereby enriching them. During the year 790, a Cambodian prince who was exiled to Java and claimed to be descended from Funan rulers was consecrated as Jayavarman II. He expanded his power northward into the Mekong Valley. In 802, he was re-consecrated as Chakravartin, or ruler of the world in northwestern Cambodia. Jayavarman II would later die in 835. During his lifetime, he was able to establish a new unified and self-ruling kingdom that would be called Angkor. His successors were less than successful in maintaining peace in the kingdom, despite having the riches and the prestige of the Angkorian temples. Many wars were fought, and invasions from neighbors occurred from time to time. One known Angkorian king, Indravarman I, who ruled from 877 to 890, constructed a reservoir and several temples in Tonla Sap, the new capital, he also commissioned a pyramid called the Bakong, the first Cambodian stone temple from which all royal temple designs would be based on. Angkor was a powerful kingdom during its heyday, so much so that it was able to expand its influence to the majority of mainland Southeast Asia. Its capital, Yasodharapura, housed as many as a million people, making it one of the largest capital cities in the world at that time until its eventual abandonment in the 16th century. A powerful monarch, forged by years of conflict, took up the helm of the kingdom and named himself Suryavarman II. He was by all accounts a great military leader, but his greatest accomplishment was the erection of the world's largest religious monument, the Angkor Wat. Have you ever visited Angkor Wat? If so, do tell us in the comments section. Years of conflict and coups within the kingdom would weaken Angkor and soon after, in the 13th century, the population mass converted to Buddhism. Its neighboring kingdoms were now expanding. It was only a matter of time before Angkor would be displaced from its position of power over Southeast Asia. Over the next four centuries, Angkor shrank and shrank until it became a small Buddhist kingdom that relied on its neighbors for trade. By 1863, fearful of Thai and Vietnamese invasion, the Cambodian king petitioned for France to protect the kingdom from outside influence. However, this relationship developed into a fully colonial one. The French ruled Cambodia until the 1950s, albeit less harsh than its treatment of Vietnam. During this time, 
Great achievements on infrastructure were made. Advancements in technology ushered in a new age for the country and even restored the temples at Yasodharapura. Cambodia gained its independence on November 9, 1953. It was a period of peace and self-reflection for the population, a time to look back at the accomplishments of the Angkorian civilization. But it was short-lived as a war was on the horizon. In the 1960s, mainland Southeast Asia would be embroiled in the Vietnam War. This included Cambodia. In 1975, a communist faction known as the Khmer Rouge took over the country. During this period, at least 1.2 million Cambodians died of malnutrition, overwork, executions, and mistreated diseases. They even attacked Vietnam, and as a response, the latter invaded and deposed the Khmer Rouge. In 1991, Cambodia came under the protection of the UN until its general elections in 1993. From then on, Cambodia has been a constitutional monarchy, ruled by a coalition government. And by 1999, it became a full-fledged member of ASEAN. According to the World Bank, Cambodia's GDP amounts to $26 billion. Being one of the poorest countries in mainland Southeast Asia, it is still reliant on foreign aid. It follows an open market system. However, it has seen its own share of rapid growth in the economic sector in the past few years. Its economy is anchored on two of its main industries, textiles and tourism. The garment industry is the largest portion of Cambodia's manufacturing sector, accounting for 80% of the country's exports. However, the tourism industry is where Cambodia excels. During the 1960s, the country was a prime destination for holiday goers. But due to the wars that followed, it became less and less desirable. It was only until the ouster of the Khmer Rouge that the tourism industry would grow again. The introduction of transport infrastructure, hastening the travel time between tourist locations, helped improve the quality of the industry. Many such sites dot the land of Cambodia, including Angkor Wat. The flag of Cambodia consists of three horizontal stripes, two blue and one red, and the facade of Angkor Wat in the middle. The Angkor Wat facade has been used in past flags in different time periods, most especially during the French protectorate period. This represented integrity, justice, and heritage. The blue horizontal bands represent liberty, cooperation, and brotherhood, while the red band represents bravery. The capital of Angkor Wat is located in Phnom Penh. The country has a total area of 181,000 square kilometers, or 70,000 square miles. It is bordered by Thailand to the north and west, Laos to the northeast, and Vietnam to the east and southeast. One of the most famous topographical features of Cambodia is the Ton Le Sap, or the Great Lake, which belongs to the Mekong River system. It was designated as a biosphere reserve by UNESCO in 1997. The highest point in Cambodia can be found in Phnom Ioro, which stands 1,800 meters or 5,900 feet above sea level. Cambodia's climate is that of monsoons, which are known as tropical wet and dry because of the distinctly marked seasonal differences. The average minimum temperature is 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, while the average maximum temperature is 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The population of Cambodia is around 17 million people, 95% of which are Khmer. The Khmer are the ancient people of the land and have lived in the area for thousands of years. They are Austroasiatic people who most likely came from South China, near Yunnan. 
they built the Khmer Empire from nothing but disjointed petty kingdoms. The alphabet they created would give birth to the later Thai and Lao alphabets. Due to India's past history with Cambodia, the country is considered to be under the Indian cultural sphere. This is seen in the massive influence of Buddhism as a religion and Hinduism in architecture. As a consequence, Cambodia is an overwhelmingly Buddhist country. Let's talk about some dishes from Cambodia. Some may be exotic to a few, but for others, they might be appetizing. First off, we have emak, or coconut fish curry. As the national dish of Cambodia, it is steamed in banana leaves and blended with krowong, a spice paste. Amok has its origins in traditional Khmer cuisine and is typically enjoyed during special occasions and festivals. Next, we have Samlar Machu. Sour soups are a staple in many Southeast Asian dishes, and this is Cambodia's take on it. Made from meat and vegetables in a sour broth, Samlar Machu is commonly enjoyed as a refreshing meal, especially during hot weather or as a comforting dish when someone is feeling under the weather. Another popular dish is Samlar Kari, the Cambodian version of chicken curry. This flavorful dish is blended with krowung along with shrimp paste, fish sauce, and palm sugar. Samlar Kari is often prepared for family gatherings and celebrations, showcasing the rich flavors of Cambodian cuisine. For those seeking something more adventurous, Try Cambodia's insect street foods. Grasshoppers, scorpions, tarantulas, and other insects are commonly eaten as snacks. These exotic foods are popular in local markets and are often enjoyed as a crunchy, protein-rich treat. Which one of these foods would you want to try? Let us know in the comments section. Here are some influential people from Cambodia. First, who isn't familiar with Pol Pot, a leading member of the Khmer Rouge who ruled Cambodia during its darkest times from 1976 to 1979, introducing the former king and prime minister of Cambodia, Norodom Sihanouk, called Samdek Yuv, or Father King. He ruled over the country over different time periods and regimes. It's impossible to talk about Cambodia without mentioning Jayavarman II, who was once king of the Khmer Empire and was vital to the growth of the kingdom. And lastly, we have Haing S. Ngor, who won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in 1985 for his performance in The Killing Fields, in which he portrayed Cambodian journalist and refugee Dith Pran. If you enjoyed this video on Cambodia, you'll love this next one.